The late great Nipsey Hussle say, if you're not congratulating, you hating. Mm. Yeah. Now Nipsey Hussle's like my favorite. Uh, how you, I, how you I, feel about Nipsey uh, in real life? Uh, yeah, I, I, I love I love uh, Earmus. Uh, yeah, Nip Nip got Earmus took out. Yeah, homie, they they don't call him Nipsey over in that country because his name have a meaning. Uh, Nip was a Rolling Sixty Crip. Earmus was a a scholar. Yeah, he was heaven sent in such a short time. So I ain't I ain't know the nigga music, homie, till after he died. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah nigga, I was I just moved back from L.A. A lot of folks. That's the case. For that's a lot that's of somebody who motivated me throughout my uh, my twenties. Uh, like Tupac did for me. Uh, when when you listen to his lyrics, homie, uh, nigga, he motivated me today. Parker, you're talking about Nip. Uh, Nip, Nip, nigga. Yeah. Uh, Nip, 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 Nip was a was a was a spirit of Park by way of by way of a teaching rapper, homie. He would he he was teaching, but be, because because Nip had to embrace the gang culture. And Irmis couldn't get away and escape it because either way, he would come up dead. Mm. He was in a lose-lose situation. Homie, once you get into that gang culture, you can't go away and not return. They force you to return. They force your allegiance. You can never grow up and be a father. You can never be a dedicated, loyal husband that says, I don't want no part. You have to. Uh, I don't want no parts of Nipsey Hussle. Mm. I'll embrace Irmis Octagon uh, till I take my last breath. Because when I got to the funeral, I'm trying to see, man, why is the people in Dallas, Texas celebrating this Nipsey Hussle nigga? Right. Not out of hate. Because when I was in L.A., they really wasn't celebrating him like that, homie. I lived on Imperial and Vermont, homie, on the, on, and right on the borderline on the Devil Lane Bloods in the Hoover's neighborhood. I was at, So they wasn't celebrating him when he was alive. Uh, his music wasn't a phenomenon when he was alive. I tried to push so many people on his music and nobody fucked with it. Oh, uh, and, and because I had because I had walked away from the Rolling Sixty gang life out of Texas and stopped embracing it as a kid, I couldn't embrace Nipsey the rapper, right? Because I ah man, Rolling Sixty. So yeah. I never I never would embrace him. Right. Uh so I went on a journey to meet Irmus. Uh I didn't have a ticket. To, to go to the to the funeral. Uh, I was invited by the Rolling 60s arch enemy, the eight Trey Gangster Crips. Oh shit. But he's an original Crip. Uh, I I left from one of the founders of the Pauru house uh, with the eight Trey. So all oh, this is just some ironic shit, right? So I'm at the original founders Pauru house with an eight Trey Gangster Crip. Ubering to the Rolling 60s main headquarters house to go to Nipsey's Hustle funeral. And my whole state is watching me. Mm. Uh, and I'm live the whole time. So I'm on a journey, homie. Uh, not knowing what I'm in store for. I'm smoking weed, getting high. Uh, I got on a badass, uh, a cool Muhammad Ali uh, uh, sweat, my bad. I had it with the Pumas on. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I had them motherfucking Pumas on. Like, cool. say, I'm repping Nip with the Pumas. The Pumas. Uh, home, I got pictures. I Man, I think I got to see. So, uh, the Rolling 60s bullied their way into the stadium. I saw the power of gang culture. Uh, I was with the founder of the Rolling 60s who started the Rolling 60s, uh, Cappuccino T. Manuel. Uh, I was with one of the first ladies, uh, and these are elders, homie. Sixties, almost seventy years old. I was one of the first uh, Miss SS, one of the first Rolling. So I'm riding the car with these original Crips and the founders of this Rolling Sixty set. They bullied their way in. What they say go. Get out! So uh, I had never seen a Bentley truck before. That's the first time I saw a Bentley truck. Uh, next thing you know, there go Puffy. So we're in arms reach of these people, and these are gangsters. Man, park the car over there so nobody tells them what to do. So I saw the power of something. Uh, I seen everything from every celebrity you can think of. So I'm on the floor with these people. I sit catty corner, so you got in front of the, you got like in front of the casket right there. I'm sitting catty corner on the floor, so I can see people's faces. Uh, we're in a big arena, Staples Center. Niggas lit up like a concert. 
but it's a casket down there. Yeah. It's a dead body in this motherfucker. Crazy. Uh, I'm from the South, so we this is a little different for me, nigga. You know, uh, mm -hmm. they playing his song, his, his album, the whole Victory Lap. So the cussing, the music, it's like being at a concert. Everybody smoking weed, the lights up. Uh, when Anthony Hamilton sung his song, uh, when Lauren London spoke, uh, Stevie Wonder sung and spoke, uh, Minister Farrakhan spoke, uh, Snoop Dogg, so many people spoke. But when that seven-year-old kid, nigga, uh, Black Sam probably had the most heartfelt speech. Okay. Because he was more visibly shaken. Him, him, him and Lauren London had the two yeah, most heartfelt yeah. speeches. But she, but she introduced the man, Irmis, not Nip. He didn't talk about mm -hmm. the musical content. She talked about what kind of man he was. And no, you see what I'm right. saying? So, right. nigga, that was a whole different picture painted. Right. Because I had never heard the music. So I'm going off what these I people, see. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 different. Ain't nobody saying Nip but Black Sam. The father spoke. But nigga, when that seven-year-old kid got up there and said, last night, ear miss came to me in a dream, mm -hmm. and he was in heaven. Nigga, I said, I put that <laughs> man, what the fuck? Nigga, uh, I ain't no dumb nigga. How can a kid articulate this? Right. This motherfucker ain't up there lying. That shit just gave me chills. Woo. Yeah. Last night. Go watch it, homies. It's, it's yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, and then he gave a vivid, detailed description of the conversation with Irmis. He said, what's up, killer? He called me killer. So, homie, I said, man, nigga, I, man, I, man, I was rocked. I've been body rocked since. Yeah. So I pay attention to children. Because, nigga, that's who God's speaking through. He can't talk to an adult. Mm. The preacher can't get that kind of message to people like that kid did. Irmus didn't visit nobody else but that kid. So, nigga, I left with Irmus, nigga. So it was easy to say what I said, nigga, because I understand how the country feels about this kid and where he's from. They hold him to high regards, and they, they don't put him on the level of a rapper. Mm. Nip keeps him on the shelf as a rapper. But nigga, if we say his whole name and learn his name, uh, he'll be in the history books. They'll, they'll, they'll write about him forever. He'll be a great poet instead of a rolling 60 Crip who rap. Mm. Even the name is just strong. That's why they give us names. Nigga, that's why they think about the name to give him. Man, I'm going to name him such. That's why, they, that's why your name is given so much consideration, nigga. And you want to change it to a street name that you, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now, nah, homie, uh, y'all getting the real me. Y'all ain't getting the character. Come on. Yeah, y'all getting the real me. <laughs> that, that's what we aim to do Hello. over here at the Danza Project. We don't like to do the, you know, and people hate us for it. because they.